Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do spiral skirts. They're also called waterfall skirts. It's a bit hard to, to differentiate between that and a different kind of waterfall when you're searching. So uh, usually spiral is a good thing to look if you're looking for inspiration photos. When you're doing a spiral um, fall, you want to kind of guess how wide you want it before you do your circle. And um, I'll usually do an inch and a half wide uh, for the for the actual spiral. Um, so usually starting out with something like this is a good start. Um, trying to come up with a size uh, using math would be really, really difficult to try and explain. So it's definitely more of a ballparking it issue. Um, basically, you're going to start off with a circle. Um, this is something that you can freehand. Oh, Jesus. Uh, as much as you need to, like I'll usually start with some kind of a form like this is the bottom of a elastic bolt, um, but I need it a bit bigger than this to start. So basically I'll just go. Your circle honestly does not need to be perfect because once you cut it, it's kind of design chaos um, and you won't see. So basically what I do is I look at about halfway around the circle. Again, this doesn't need to be exact. Um, and I'll just mark that as kind of a set point. Between here and there, I make a mark that's about half of this length, right? Because basically I'm trying to graduate this so that ballparks the size. So I'll go from here, draw it into there. And go there to get my spiral. Now the thing is, is this line here you're going to ignore at this point. And now you're working with this thickness. So start your spiral and keep it this distance from that outer edge. Again, it just has to be approximate really. I kind of went in too far there, so let's go like this. And you're going to come to a point where this ends prematurely, basically. You're going to have a cutoff. This is going to be cut off now. So your first time you cut this out, I like to do a second one just as a pattern. So one's going to be just in case it works and one's going to be the good one. So that's what your nicer, nicer version will look like. So I always recommend testing this out on a scrap before you actually cut, before you decide that this is the size you're using. All right, so I start all my spirals from the outside in when I'm patterning it. You can go from the inside out. I find it more difficult but then other people's brains work different, so I figure I'll cover both ways. Uh, this is my third attempt at doing it now um, because I, I always screw this up. So like the other way, it is a matter of um, kind of guesstimation and experimenting until you get what you want. But basically draw a circle where this is about the diameter that you're going to want of your actual, the width of your ruffle. Like the diameter here is the width of your ruffle, right? From there, basically just start... Oh shit, you know I did it wrong. Start going like this. Do about half of this length here. And you're going to spiral this in. Okay. To about here. Now some of these lines you're going to end up ignoring when you're done. Um, I'm doing it in marker so you can actually see what I'm doing. But basically... This is going to be your cutting piece. This gets discarded here. So I'll, there's your discard. 
and then just maintaining that approximate distance, just spiral out from there. And then when you get to the approximate size you're going to want, just cut it off. And there you go. So then when you cut, I guess I could show cutting it, huh? So like the other one, I recommend transferring this to a copy before you cut it out, but I'm not going to be cutting this out more than once, so I'm not going to bother. And you can definitely take more time with this. Again, I don't want to make a 20 minute video on cutting spirals out of fabric. And you can correct like that I off overshot there. I'll correct that as I go with cutting this. And I just discard that part. And as you see, we've got that same spiral. And if it were fabric, that's essentially what it would look like. So I'm just going to use a scrap of black. Usually I wouldn't recommend using actual spandex as your skirt for this because you need a ton of these cut out and it gets very, very heavy, very fast, especially if you're going with any kind of length to it. But this is just, I've got a lot of this. It works well. So It's just going to be an approximate. So because it's a rough guess, I'm not even going to bother trying to cut it perfectly. This is just to check sizing. Now the interesting thing with this is, is it's actually, it doesn't look like it's going to be much. Like if you were to hold that up, it doesn't look like a lot. This is actually going to be quite a long skirt. Like it's going to be longer than I would use for a skating dress, you know? Again, this really doesn't have to be perfect. That should be better than that though. I'm making a mess. Okay. I just want to make a 20 minute long video to show you how to cut a spiral out of spandex. So this is what you end up with as your initial pattern, right? This is going to be the part that you attach to your waistline. And that's what you end up with for a spiral. So as you can see, that's a very long spiral. Now there is a, a second way that you can do this. And I'm going to show you that real quick. It's not quite the same effect, but it's very close. And this one is better for um, wider spirals. I'm just really quickly ballparking this. You know what, I'm just going to eyeball it. So basically what's going to happen is this one is a lot easier for determining your length. So you figure out the length of the drop that you want on this skirt. So let's say we want, um, well, let's see how much space I've got to work with here. Just like, so say, say I want um, an 8 inch drop, right? You would cut an 8 inch diameter circle. So I'm just going to rough it up here. This one is much, much easier to cut out than the spiral style. So it's four inches there, about four inches there, I'll determine. And then just kind of press here so you've got a bit of an indication of where the center piece is. 
And then what you're going to do is cut to the halfway point, point, and then just make a bit of a teardrop. Give that a second. And then what you do is there's another spiral. And you can cut this corner a little bit so you've got a bit more to attach to your waistline. But basically that's how, how it'll drape if you just do a circle like that. And it doesn't look like much by itself. It's when you put multiple of them and layers of them and when they're mesh, um, they fall a little bit differently than this, but this is just for sizing. Uh, so I've been cutting, I've been working on a dress that's using the spiral method. And this is the size of the spiral that I've been doing. And I just wanna show you what it looks like when you cut dozens of them out. Is that so you can see it's not what one of them looks like it's what the grouping looks like together that actually makes the effect because by itself like this is one of those pieces this is the side that attaches that's all you get but all together it's a much nicer effect so that's that's how I cut the waterfall skirts and basically what I do when I'm sewing it, as I sew the bottom, I get the elastic in and everything good to go. Oh, that's got glitter everywhere. But see, the bottom's ready to go. And then I'll just attach. I'll attach it so it's glitter side out to start up top because the top part tends to fall as is. It's it once, it, once it gets past that first round is where it starts twisting. So I like to have the right side facing out at the top. And I'll just pin it on. And then the next one, assuming I'm doing multiple layers of mesh, um, I'll overlap it by about half. And then the next layer, I'll overlap that by half or further apart until you get something that looks like this. And then I'll be cutting out a layer of black to put on top of that. And that's what we have. Um, now you're gonna wanna use a fabric that is not, that doesn't fray. So this is a stretch mesh that you can cut it and pull it and you see it doesn't, it's not gonna fray. Um, if you use something that frays, you're gonna need to hem it and you really do not wanna hem when you're cutting a million spirals like this. And I think that's all I've got to say on the matter. So it's, it's really easy, you just cut your spirals out. And like I said, because um, the math of trying to figure out like the rate of the spiral and how wide it is and where your start point is and where your end point is, um, is not, honestly, it's nothing I'd actually know off the top of my head. And if I did, I certainly wouldn't be able to explain it. It's definitely a matter of ballparking. And once you pull your first spiral out, you can guess and go like, okay, well, that's about 11 inches. So if you, uh, overestimated, then you just cut, let me flip it. You're going to cut whatever you don't need. So if I was two inches too long, I would take two inches off the inner circle at this edge. So I'd just cut it there and then I'd have my shorter length. If I over, or if I underestimated, sorry, then what I'd do is I'd go back to my first pattern. You know how I did this? I'd keep it on a bigger piece of paper and I'd just add. So if I needed two more inches, then I'd measure two inches along this inner edge here. And I'd just draw that on and cut the new one. And then I'd test that also before I started cutting a bunch more. It's always good to draw more than one of your pattern piece out when you start. Um, even if you just do the one, so if I did this and then decided I need two more inches and I'll draw two more inches, I will copy that version and put it aside before I cut this, just so I have something solid to alter before I do the next round. And usually it only takes like two or three total testers before you're like, yeah, that is what I want. Cause I might've decided that I that this was too narrow and I wanted it a fair amount wider. I didn't. Um, but it's just the kind of thing that you don't really know exactly how it's going to look until you've got it hanging up and you decide like, ah, that could be wider. That could be more narrow. I want it longer. I want it shorter. Uh, so I think that's all I've got to say about that. That's a, a spiral skirt or a waterfall skirt, depending on who you ask.